uh, for you, David, I know we've done some conversations about DeFi and dApps and stuff. You, uh, we talked about liquid staking before. We learned a little bit about this, and I'm not too keen on it. I haven't done a lot of it. Have you done a lot of liquid staking in other places? I haven't personally done a lot of it, but I have been reading up a lot lately. I see a lot of the new companies coming up in this space that that's starting to become one of the big buzzwords. Like I'm, I'm feeling the same kind of vibes that I were, that I was when everyone first started talking about D pin first started talking about RWAs. And that's what I'm starting to pay attention to. When you see the chatter pick up that that's when you really want to really, really want to hone in and try to stay ahead of it. But you know, Hey, a anything that, that is in with crypto, liquid staking, 10x liquid staking, propane liquid staking. I, I want to get in on the action. So I'm excited for this one. Yeah, I know a lot of the speakers down here because I, rec I, I, rec I uh, recognize some people have talked about this stuff before. So going around the room by show of emojis and hands, both speakers and listeners, who in here has used products like Lido for liquid staking or Aave for lending and borrowing? And, and that's the kind of stuff we're going to be talking about. Are you using these on other chains? Or are these products you're familiar with? Because we're, we're basically looking to talk to people who have experience with those types of products. We're going to have conversations about things like why, uh, why do these things bring value to a chain? Why would a chain need products like this to survive? Uh, for example, there are smaller chains that these might be the products that drive the majority of their TVL or, or the, the majority of their action and stuff like that. So that's the whole conversation today. Now, general market news, just because we're jumping off right now, uh, five minutes into the spaces and stuff. Uh, Crypto is still going sideways. Uh, things are not very exciting as far as Bitcoin is concerned. We still have to mention that stuff. ETH around 3K, Bitcoin 63 and a half, uh, still channeling sideways post having blues, which is, I think, what everybody's called it at this point things are just going weird but there's a lot of macro stuff uh so DeFi and meme coins i think are actually dominating because of this boredom when this this sets in david do you do you think that when when bitcoin channels sideways and stuff the people that are already here and already have bags do we get bored and is this why stuff like this gets more popular Or anyone else. Buzz, do you think that uh, when people are bored with Bitcoin, do they, I mean, we talk, We know outflows happen to alts when Bitcoin is stale, but does the attention economy really swerve that much? Well, I think uh, the nature of crypto, like, like if you look at how people get involved in crypto to begin with, it's a, it's a subsection of our society that loves volatility. Like whether it be from people who are really into poker or gambling or people who are sort of like on the, the fringes of society. Like like typically that, that core level of crypto degen user, they love volatility. So I think volatility just gets attention everywhere in this space. Um, Shane, I was really surprised that not all the speakers kind of put their hand up to say that they've uh, used liquid staking products. Um, like what, what I would love to pose, if it's okay with you guys as the host, is... Uh, like, how long has everybody held ETH, for example? Like, I'd love to hear the argument against putting ETH into something like Lido, um, where you're just earning 3% um, to, uh, to basically own ETH. I know there's some people here that are long-term ETH holders. I'll, I'm going to go to that question because I saw a hand come up from money. But Taco and uh, someone else had their hand up before that. Taco, go ahead, and then uh, the other guy. GM, GM. Yeah, no, to, to, to roll back real quick on Buzz's question, you know, um, ETH is one of those things to where if you have a lot of it and it's just sitting in your wallet, why not stake it? And, you know, there's, there's been a, you know, everything from rocket pool and we've seen, uh, you know, with stake ETH, Lido sort of being one of the first to markets that movers, maybe not the direct first to market, but one of the biggest movers and the most, the biggest player in it, they've really sort of upped their game with some of the products that they've come out with, especially with their, their, um, emissions diversion. Um, and so I'll talk on that later, but like, this is one of those things where if you have something rather than just sort of, you know, letting it just sit and do nothing, you know, it, it, it gives it a good chance for you to earn a little bit more on that and, and provide back. Cause not everyone wants to be a validator. Not, not everyone wants to, you know, has 32 ETH that they can stake so that they can manage their own, uh, stake rewards. But Going through a, a liquid staking token platform like this, um, Lido being, you know, there's, there's, poof, there's a ton of different, there's like four different products that I could talk of on my top of my head if I thought scrape the surface, but Lido being the biggest of them, um, it's a game changer in the aspect when people gave it value rather than just having a receipt that you staked your ETH. Now you have a token 
the, and that's a value proposition piece. So it's, it, you know, it becomes, everyone tries to find things that they can trade and move and keep things liquid. That was the biggest thing with things. Uh, you know, how do you, in a permissionless society, how do you, how do you stay liquid? And this, you know, we have Lido to sort of help pave the way for that. Those are great points. Getting the token gives you a sense of security, at least. Cash, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to answer the question of when Bitcoin starts trading sideways, does that, you know, make it more appealing for people to hop into these meme tokens? And, and, and I think it does, right? Because we're a lot of degenerates in this space. We're looking for our exes, right? Our risk tolerance is astronomical. Uh, at least a lot of the people that I hang around with, right? Risk tolerance through the roof. So when we see Bitcoin trading sideways and we're looking for those, you know, those DGEN plays, all the new shiny meme tokens, the new communities that pop up, they do get our attention. Um, and yeah, I think that's, that's just why, right? Because, because we have that tolerance. That's why we're in this space. We're looking for the X's. And when shit's trading sideways, we're looking for the bounce. Looking for the X's. You're probably in this space. If you're in this space, you're looking for the X's. I would agree with that. Money G, you're up. Yo, what's up? I'm actually really excited by this space today because we're talking about DeFi and also we're talking about meme coins, two of the things that I love. And it's definitely something that I've been doing for a long period of time. I started off in, in Ethereum. I love the fact that I can compound my yield. I love the fact that I can do things like single-sided staking. I can use, for example, Uniswap or Aave or something like that. But, you know, this is what I do every day. This is what I like. I, I do it on Pulse Chain, I do it on Ethereum, I make yield all the time, and so I don't have to worry when there's sideways action. If there is sideways action, it's perfect for me, especially if I'm liquidity providing. I think this is one of the areas and the spaces whereby in meme coins, we don't talk about DeFi enough because it's great you hit a pump, let's say you hit a, a 50, 100, 200x on a meme coin, but what if you can earn some yield and interest from those meme coins when you're sitting around when we've got days like today man where the market's kind of boring it's a bit sideways sideways action is perfect for yield farming sideways action is perfect for earning interest so for me like i do this on pulse chain on ethereum i'm sure it's going to come to other platforms as well i don't know so much in solana so maybe some of the solana guys can tell me you know what protocols are available but i've been using DeFi for ages and I also, I just, I just love it. I love earning interest and yield. And this can be as high up as 100% APR, 40% APR, which is amazing. You know, when you think about, you can stack your money and you can compound it in a bull run as it goes towards the top. Why wouldn't you do it? Compound is going to be a hot word. Block threw the hand up there at the end. What do you inspire, Block? What'd you hear? Uh, well, he did mention uh, Solana, DeFi. There are some good DeFi protocol, uh, protocols on uh, Solana. Uh, there's one called Camino Finance. Um, our, one of my favorite influencers was actually speaking about that. A lot of times influencers won't give you actual alpha. They'll just give you whatever they're shilling. And uh, this time he actually came through with something really good. Um, they have borrow lending. They have liquidity providing. All kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. Um, so, yeah, Solana does have some really good DeFi protocols. Um, and uh, I'm, uh, to be honest with you, man, uh, I'm right there with you, Money Gang. I'm so bullish on providing liquidity. I, I had started doing it a couple years ago when we had um, uh, pancake swap I started on BNB with pancake swap and thought that was pretty interesting like I thought it, I, I had no idea what I was doing um, I just realized like at a certain point I was like ah, let me let me see if I can make some make some extra money make some yield and and it, and it worked and I was like yo I'm never I'm never going back <laughs> I'm never going back uh, but you know, yeah it's definitely um, like you know, you know we have um, Ethereum, uh, they have great ones, but Solana's coming up too, man. Solana's definitely coming up too, so uh, check out uh, Camino. Can I, can I ask, though, with 75% of the transactions failing on Solana, does that not make... Bro, leave it alone! Do not say anything! <laughs> Yo, leave it alone! Leave it alone, money gang! Wait, so, no, it's like... Uh, Block brought up a good point with, with Camino, but there's some bigger players that are coming up, um, number one being Hawksite. So they do, uh, they do a, a program sort of like Gamma, uh, where it moves your position so that you're staying within that yield, that yield zone. So, you know, one of the biggest things we always have to worry about is impermanent loss. You know, if, if you're providing to a two-sided stake, you know, it trading out of your zone and you just having one side, it doesn't matter if you have 
uh, you know, if both tokens matter, don't matter to you and, and you want to have either one, you know, but if you're wanting to trade in a zone and get that best yield, like on a V3 position where you can always say V3. Yeah. Where you can always just harvest yield and just let your, your collateral sit in there. Uh, Hawk side is an amazing spot. You can even one side in to the LP. It will push you into the, it will push you into that pool, zap you in and you can zap right out whenever you want. Um, but it keeps, it's a good thing, just like radium and Orca and just cause transactions fail, if they're costing 0. 0.002 cents and it's like one out of 10 times that it's failing for you, just wait. Uh, but also you can use a better wallet provider rather than just sitting with phantom. You can go with like soul flare, which is super just solely dedicated to making sure your transaction happens on Solana. Oh, okay, cool, man. No, that's good to hear because, you know, especially if you're riding the pump and you're in assets in a kind of DeFi protocol, like a V3 position or something like that, and you're having to, like, push through the transaction over and over and over again, that would frustrate the heck out of me, you know. And, and cheap fees is the most important thing, especially with DeFi. You don't want to be... It, yeah, that's the problem, and, I think, with ETH at the moment. And I, that, I, that's why I do, I do shit on 40 different chains, including Pulse chains. So, you know, I got positions both on PulseX, both on on uh, nine inch, and, that's and it, man. Well, you know, and so it's like you know, finding liquidity positions is, is a no brainer. Um, for those that are just starting, as, as you learn in permanent loss, I would recommend pairing like USDC and USDT. So you're just trading back and forth dollars for dollars, and then that way you can actually visually see how your pool changes in your position. Like, oh, now you have. You know, if you're doing $100 and you put in 50-50, now you have 75-25, and you can actually visually see what trades are happening and where uh, sentiment is. You know, you can really see that. He said, uh, he said, Fitty, Fitty, I got to go to Fitty now. That's three in a row. Fitty, what's up? Fitty's going to break his hand if he keeps it up any longer. Bro's running to the phone. Can you hear him scrambling? Fitty, I know you're there, bro. I'm going to go to Buzz. Three, two, one. Buzz, you're up. No, I just love what Taco said about uh, people just getting started. And I think another great way to get started is is just by using a product like Lido, like getting staked ETH or Steeth, however people want to pronounce it, and adding to a, a different no permanent loss pool like Steeth ETH, um, staked ETH and ETH. And then that way, it, it it's sort of, it's the same concept of owning two assets that should be priced very similarly to uh, decrease your impermanent loss. But that way, if you're own, you're owning staked ETH as well, you're still getting that 3% from Lido as well. So by doing that exact same action, not just in stable coins, you can earn an extra 3% by using a liquid staking product too, and uh, get your hands a little bit dirty there as well. Those are good points. David, did any of this get your attention to uh, think about anything? I've, I heard 32 ETH for a validator, and it's something that I, I remember all the time. It's like, that's a great goal to have, but this liquid staking and, and getting a smaller yield is much more realistic for almost everybody, right? I like to pretend like, oh, it's only 32 ETH to set up your own validator. <laughs> but is this more realistic? What do you think? Oh, absolutely, Pulse. I mean, I, I think this is something that really gives people more options and more opportunity. You don't need everything all at once. Like, that that's, that's something huge in this space where we have people all around the world. We've got some who may want to get in on that, may want to have their own validator. Liquid staking and everything behind that, all of these new innovations, that's going to present even more options than we already have. Like, Web3, we, we already have more options than everybody else. And, like, they keep on making cool stuff that gives us even more. Like, how could you not be bullish on that? Uh, Fitty, got to throw it over to you. Round two. Running for the phone. Literally, nope, sad faces in the audience. <laughs> That's so funny. So if you say they're making, making more cool things every day, what you're saying is there's more options for people to play on. Here's my question, then. Why is everyone launching their own layer two, then? Like, because everybody's had, they got to stake here, they got to validate this, they got to prop this up. Why are we seeing this diversification of, of L2s? Is this just a, a case where everybody thinks they can do it better? Or everybody's got one unique thing and they're putting their own spin on the, the L2 products? Uh, throw up a hand if you think you know why you're seeing more L2s and, and more products offering L2 solutions or unique solutions. Go ahead, Money, you're up first. Yeah, I think it comes back to what Vitalik decided to do when he decided to uh, do his latest upgrade, EIP upgrade. And it was to speed up and reduce the transaction costs of 
um, Ethereum layer twos. He didn't shard the network on layer ones. You know, there were other protocols that did layer ones that, that, that forked layer ones, like Polchain, for example, on ETH. But in terms of what he did with ETH, he just did not really care about sharding the network and making it quicker and cheaper. His focus was making sure that ETH layer twos, EVM layer twos, would be quicker and cheaper. So I think it's a reaction to that. And then also you've got like, for example, base trying to, you know, they're on their heels when it comes to Solana because Solana's really been performing quite well. So they go, well, okay, we're going to infuse as much money as we can and try and take some of that user usership and we're going to try and bring it across. And so I think that's, that's why uh, I'd be interested to hear anyone else's thoughts, whether they disagree with that. I see Taco Taco's hands up. I, I, I saw Fiddy's hand come back up, and I, I don't want to, you know. And now, yeah. oh, now the I return of Fiddy. Fiddy, are you there now? Yeah, you know what? I was I, I got there was one person I couldn't hear. I don't know what it was, but I got rugged, so I'm sorry about that. But I saw everybody laughing. I'm assuming that you're calling me and you couldn't hear me. I was like, okay, so I just had to get out and come back. Um, so I can't disagree or agree with anybody. Um, I've been I've been doing the liquid stake pools for probably two three years and i would say be cautious because these things can flip on you pretty quickly really quickly if you don't know what you're doing um if you're not running your own node or when you're just kind of starting out whether you dabble you see some of the last time last bull market we had those five thousand twenty thousand pools a hundred thousand it got pretty crazy so i personally just invest in straight bitcoin straight currency and just hold that i mean once in a while i'll play i'll dabble but i kind of know what i'm doing and i have some friends that actually can guide me if I don't know. So I would say have a buddy you can call because if you're getting one of these pools and you don't know what you're doing, you get stuck somewhere, it, you can get wrecked. So I would just have a friend you can call like on a regular phone that you could trust to help you out with that because they can get kind of dicey, but you can make a lot of money. You can also lose a lot of money. So I do like the, a lot of the liquids pools, but they seem to start come out at the bull market and then all of a sudden they could flip on you in 30 seconds. That's just my take on that. I, I just love the picture of you on a dial-up phone doing the, like, <laughs> calling your trusted friend on, like, a physical phone. Yeah, uh, I guess like, like a cell phone. Yeah. Like, dude, I have a cell phone that actually has, <laughs> like, I, my cell phone has, like, text messaging, email. I could check, like, Dex tools. I have one of those sure. new thing, iPhone things. You could do all kinds of shit on it. It's pretty cool. A little fancier. A little fancier. Yeah. Taco, you still want to go in? Uh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, uh, so, one of the things that, like, uh, uh, as money was talking with like base, I actually just posted about this today um, that base had more transactions than any other layer two network in the last 30 days um, and double the transactions of Ethereum. Um, and so uh, I think it was buzz or MoneyGram that had sort of talked about the, one of the, the Dan Kuhn upgrade and stuff like that, where uh, blobs were implemented um, where it's basically batched transactions. I forget what blob stands for off the top of my head, but um um, it basically, instead of each transaction rolling up uh, from a layer two, they're all batched together. And so that's making it a lot cheaper on Ethereum. And that's why we're seeing GUE at like four to five GUE right now, or five to 10, which actually over the last couple of days has turned Ethereum from being, uh, deflationary to, uh, inflationary, um, which is an interesting, uh, concept, but, uh, yeah, the, I, 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 I have to counter though Fiddy on at least with Lido, um, and I and I could talk on like maybe like Rocket, but like Lido specifically, it could depeg technically. Anything can depeg on price, but because Lido is over collateralized, meaning that there is more ETH backing than what has been uh, minted, um, that that you might depeg the price the the price of of lido e staked eth st eth might depeg and not be at like that you know s slightly higher price than eth but you can always redeem it um for your more than what you put in for so uh, i the price uh, of everything is speculative and can depeg but there's enough arbitrage bots out there that that would be quickly eaten up you know, and, and I, don't uh, on, I don't disagree with you. Man. I, don't, I, don't, I don't disagree with you. Like I, 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 like I said, if you know what you're doing, because a lot of a lot of people I know they don't. So if you're not familiar with it, you can get wrecked. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, 
but I will. I want to touch on the base thing. Um, I've been very bullish on base, and the reason you're seeing so many base transactions is because you're seeing what we've been asking for for the last five years. How do we trade ETH without gas? I've been extremely bullish on on base. Um, I actually got into two other plays yesterday. That, that one of the top ones there. I've been with uh, a one called Pola. I've wrote it from like I think six hundred thousand to eight million. I think they're at four or five today. And the guys that are on base right now, there's five or six, seven projects. They're all flying. And so we're super early to base. And what's base, what base is doing is actually make Vitalik look good because a lot of people think Vitalik is doing something really brilliant behind the scenes because nobody's really trading on ETH. They're all trading on base. And Vitalik's looking like the superhero. I mean, what if this is something that he planned to do with uh, base? What if this is a conversation they had? Who knows? I totally got to go in here on this one because you gave me the segue and half the crowd is going to be cheering and the other half is going to have strong opinions. So you guys can raise your hands as I go. But um, base to me, and I'm saying this is crypto pulse, not Mario's host or, or anything like that. I honestly believe that the support for base is because the base is so large that people believe that that Coinbase supporting it is what makes it a safe place to do things. I think there's a presumption that base is safer than other places just because it has this this monstrous looming institutional backing behind it. And I think people just feel more comfortable because what I'm going to say, here's where it gets spicy and I see the hands are going to go up, is why isn't it Shibarium? Shib, Shib, Shib has built this chain to do the same thing. There are other chains that are lowering the cost of ETH, but they, they won't see the developers. It's not the users on chain that worry me when you're looking at all chains. Why aren't there developers that are choosing to launch contracts on other chains like Shibarium or like any of these other, I'll name other ones just so I can be fair. There's chains like Aptos and Solana's got uh, products that, you know, they, they need developers. Why base? You know, is it, is it, I think it's this institutional backing, but I would say, because I know half this group is here to hear K9 and some Shibarium conversation, I don't know how many of you are even very familiar with what SHIB and Shibarium are, are doing, are working on, and at risk of just shilling that, that's a product that is another L2 that's trying to provide low gas solutions, but these chains to me, and then I'm going to go to Buzz first because I saw hands go up, they suffer from a lack of developers, not retail buyers, not token traders. If you build it, they will come. I think if they had tokens to trade, they would be there. And I think base attracts developers. End rant. Buzz, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree that base has incredible technology. Like, I was actually reading this morning about the blobs as well. It's a, it's a great chain from a development perspective. Um I, I would love to see the, the rumors forming about how uh, this could be Vitalik's master plan. I think it's probably unlikely because Vitalik does um, seemingly stand for a lot of decentralization. Like I think a lot of the popularity for for base comes out of uh, it being Coinbase affiliated, right? Like they have a user base and a brand that is so vast that's going to attract people. Um, and I think to answer your question about like why do developers build in certain places, it's developers are typically chasing... TVL, like if you're going to launch a token or you're going to launch an NFT or some sort of DeFi system, you're, you're typically just chasing TVL. Um, in, in regards to your Shibarium question, I do think it's an excellent chain as well. Like the, I think personally, very undervalued, um, a lot of retail activity there, but not seeing as much development activity as a chain like Base. And, and just to kind of go full circle, like that's what we're trying to do with, with K9 is really be that TVL bridge and be that uh, um, sort of DeFi architecture for the meme economy that, that we think is going to happen on Shibarium, but try to bring TVL to Shibarium because developers and development activity and traders, they, they chase TVL. I see the pulse to pulse connections got to happen. Pulse, what's up? <laughs> Hands up. Pulse radio, pulse RA, pulse. Oh, I see you there. There you go. I was, I was wondering, uh, with everyone wanting to stay liquid and move and be agile here, you got the seven-day bridge coming back from base, and they claim it's for security, but don't you think that'll hurt them when it comes to staking and, and meme coins when people want to move their money to another chain with that, that length of bridge? Well, Pulse, Pulse people always ask hard questions. Dude, that's a great question. Taco, you can go first, and then I want to see if anybody wants to answer that, because uh, uh, Base is not the only one that suffers from a delayed off-ramp feature, and I could go on about that myself. Taco, you're up first, though. So, so that is that is a native communication layer piece. Um, you, there's instantaneous bridges, just like there is with Pulse, you know, and so it's a, it's a communication thing on security. You have that with 
you know, uh, Arbitrum was one of the first to implement it and stuff like that. So it's not a not something new, but it's a it's a security base if you're doing it natively. You can use any bridge from you know DeFi Llama to Uniswap to um, Leafy to anything and just get off, but um, and get off instantaneously. But I think one of the biggest questions that was asked was why is Base taken off? You know, and and yeah, the institutional play. But because Coinbase is so readily available for people, Coinbase is pushing a lot of people instead of using their app to use their DeFi wallet. And that's a really cool thing because they're trying to teach people not your keys, not your crypto, but you can go do stuff on your own self-custody wallet. And they, they, you know, one of the biggest pushes that they did, and, and what I used to do is I used to sign people up to Coinbase left and right because you didn't have to... Uh, attach your bank account and you could get right into their learn and earn. Now they push their learn and earn from inside their app to their DeFi wallet. So you got to go on chain and do tasks to learn about web three to be able to reap some good rewards. You know, I think a new user can earn about 130 bucks, uh, you know, within their first month of crypto that is theirs. They could sell it as soon as they get it and send it to their bank account. That's how much it's theirs. And so I think people underplay the power of base um, because they, they put that institutional tag on it. But Coinbase itself is divesting base from itself and, and opening it up to make it more decentralized. So they're just trying to start that huge flywheel on it. Are they getting all of these sequencer rewards because they're the largest validator of it? Yes. But they also opened it up and made it permissionless so that anyone could. So... You know, Those are very good points. And that's true about them being the validator too. They're, they're paying their own way. You know, they're getting a little bit on the backside for it. Uh, we're halfway through a one hour space. Is this time to do the room reset? And I got to check David's temperature over there. You guys were at 118. We triple digited the comments, which I knew we would, but let's do it again. Can we double that? Can we do that? Uh, run it up again. Uh, another one, as uh, one famous person has said, uh, I've heard before, let's double it. 250 maybe before we get to the end of the spaces. And I want to see more comments about the conversation we've had. If you've got questions about what we've been talking about, we'll check in down there as we go. Uh, I do see that there were more requests. Like I said, I appreciate the requests when the hands come up. We'll get to you guys uh, when we can. And in about 10, or 10 minutes or so, uh, we're going to take a deeper dive into canine finance and let Buzz and Turtle and Funk and the guys uh, rip back and forth about what they're building over there. But I got to see what David's thinking about all this stuff, dude, because like the last time we did a liquid staking show, I'm over here furiously taking notes. And I'm wondering if I'm like not managing the things that I'm sitting on well enough. How's this going for you? Man, Pulse, I don't know what it is. I think you may be part AI because you've you've been reading my mind more than any more than every relationship I've been in combined, bro. I don't I don't know how you do it, but I'm in the same boat. I'm taking notes and I'm trying to I'm trying to get a piece of out of all of these big brains so that I can try to replicate it and like do something cool. But you know, something that you asked really stood out to me. Like, why why don't more more do it? Like, what? What really is attractive about each of these different L2s? And, you know, I, one of the biggest things to me, bro, like, I want to see bullish partnerships out here in Web3. I want to see the new ones working with some of the big ones. I want to see everybody getting out there and finding out what's, what's going to be the new thing. How is the meta shifting so that we can make sure that we've got something cool going on with our own version of this? And, you know, that, that's exactly what I see here. Like, how closely they these guys are working with with shib and just that relationship that's what i'm paying attention to that's what i want to learn from so i mean this bro this this is perfect for me i would i would have came into this one as a listener i got lucky today well, SHIB has been trying to build an ecosystem since they launched, and uh, they've been trying to get out from under the meme coin name, which I don't think they ever will, but to, to add utility. And one thing I've heard Buzz talk about before uh, with what Gito did on uh, with their stuff uh, for Jupiter, and uh, the, the, they, they locked this TBL is what makes a chain like functional. It locks a chain down as a place where trading can happen. Because imagine all the money that would have just been locked in validators, you know, can now be used freely to trade on a, on a uh, sub layer. It's a huge change. So it's interesting to think that SHIB has got such a large user base, such a large reach worldwide. Uh, and yet Shibarium is still one of those things that when we get into spaces like this, I know there are people in here that still don't even know about it yet. And that's why it's fun to bring it up because base really has the shine. 
I do believe it's just like we said, the institutional moniker of base and stuff like that. But uh, is anybody in here other than the guys that are from K9? Because I know you guys are going to throw your hands up. Is anybody on the panel currently aware of or already trading on Shibarium? Do you guys already know about that? Money, Taco, uh, anybody familiar with this yet? It's okay. It's okay if you're not. And if you're not, you can also raise your hand and let me know, too, because I'd just be I, curious. I, I, I think I was on Testnet uh, after meeting the team uh, at, like, a conference, um, I think. But, I like, I, I remember it coming up. But, uh, you know, my big question on this is, how do I bridge to it? That's a great question. That'd be, that'd be one of the things that with any L2, I think that that's got to be the easiest answer to find. And that I will actually let uh, either Buzz or Funk is over there in the canine account. I believe that's Funk. If you, neither one of you knows the answer right off the top of your head, that's yours to jump on. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah, the, uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, there, there's two main ways. There's, there's the official bridge uh, that's run by the ship team and then, uh, the, the most popular way to bridge over right now is actually users of Gate, because um, Gate Gate.io actually supports the Shibarium network. So that's uh, I think the most popular way for people to bridge over right now, just because the bridge suffers from some of the delays that we've been talking about right now. But I do know that there's a new bridge coming that the uh, the Shib team's working on. And Funk, is that your answer too? Or are you going to say uh, Gate.io? I know gets traction, but what else is there? Yeah, I think Gate IO is the, uh, the the quickest and arguably the cheapest. But there also are third party services. I know we're partnered with Sharby, who built their own bridge, and uh, K9 Finance mm -hmm. is going to have their own bridge as well. It functionally by use, utilizing the delegator. So uh, we will have our own way to get over there too. But the more ways people can bridge, and the easier it becomes, the more adoption comes along with the TVL. Uh, just so you know, one of the things that uh, I don't know if you know D Bridge. Um, one of the things that they opened up is if you want a bridge to your chain, they will provide that service for a fee, but they will, they will build it, uh, and they will make it happen. So, uh, for me, I think the, the biggest way of getting, you know, to show liquidity, as we were talking about, you know, liquid staking, being able to come and go, uh, I think is one of the biggest things to, to let the DGENs play. It's interesting when you say that because what I think about, um, my mind always goes to infographics just because I have a background where uh, infographics really help communicate complex stuff easily with people. And just being able to show people the easy in, easy out, like don't worry about getting stuck on the other side type of message really does matter for all these different L2s because I think that people would be worried that like, okay, if I go in and I have even, what's the worst going in is having great gains and not being able to get back out, right? Or going to make a meme coin trade on a, a small chain and seeing that wallet grow and then getting stuck. If I remember correctly, base chain, uh, when they first launched, they didn't actually have the other side of the bridge. People were making like these huge gains and sharing screenshots, but there was no way to get out. So uh, it's something to think about for anybody that's working on an L2, maybe convincing your audience that it's definitely something like, here's the in, here's the out, check it out. You know, bridging videos and stuff like that are crucial so people don't get locked up. Money G, you got that hand up. Yeah, I thought it would be a question as you're on the subject of Shibarium and stuff like that. I'm trying to understand from probably the guys who are presenting today is like, apart from like Shiba Inu, like what is the benefits of your L2 and, and, and apart from that particular token, what is the benefits? For example, like I know on Ethereum, there's so many different protocols and DeFi products. On Pulse Chain, it's a carbon copy of Ethereum much cheaper, way way cheaper than even base. Base has been popping off. Obviously, it's an L2, maybe a bit of a top signal. And then with Solana, I know it's like DGen Central. I love it. You know, you you can get into loads of racist meme coins. But I want to know with Shibarium, like what else is there? Like what what do we what would be the benefit to go across? Yeah, I can grab that. Um, well, the uh, I, I think the one thing that you said about uh, like other than being related to Shib, what is great about it, and and I can just speak as a as a builder, like that's definitely my favorite piece about building here, is that uh, you, you get so much support as a product builder, right? Like you can build something on Ethereum, you can build it on Polygon, and unless you you have some sort of great distribution and marketing, oftentimes it doesn't get seen. Um, but but uh, Shibarium is a Polygon fork. So it's uh, it's an L2. Um, it has like those same parameters that you would have on Polygon, like cheap, fast, efficient, reliable. Um, it's becoming more decentralized week over week. So we've just become the thirteenth validator. Um, so it has a lot of the same properties as like a Polygon L2. But I actually feel as though 
being part of the SHIB army and like access to over 2 million holders that SHIB has and just the, the retail activity and, and excitement to use products is, is something that, uh, that really makes it unique in terms of the, the angle of building there as a product builder. Um, th that's basically why we chose to build there. So I think it's, it's important to kind of look at how Shibarium came to be. So SHIB launched, um, and then a few years later at East Toronto this past summer, they chose to launch Shibarium. Um, and our team was there at the conference and got to meet the team and the immediate questions became things like we've talked about in this space, like why are people going to go there? Why are they going to use it? How are you going to attract TVL? And when we were just talking about base, it was like, oh, they have great incentives. Uh, you can get 140 bucks by signing up and doing these learn to earn programs. There's meme coins that are going crazy. And when you look into the, the eyes of a DGen, um, like they're hunting airdrops, they're hunting TVL, they're hunting meme coins that are going crazy. And when we looked at when Shibarium was launching, it's like, wh which of these factors is Shibarium going to have that's going to get millions of users over there? And uh, like we identified a gap, and that gap was, hey, right now there's not a huge driver of TVL, and we, uh, we, we were bullish on the SHIB army and, and Shibarium potentially taking off and wanted to play that piece to um, basically be a Lido polygon fork, but to use our product as a conduit to allow people to delegate to a validator and immediately bridge over for TVL. That's a really good answer. Yeah, cool, man. I, I just wanted to know because, you know, I work for Nine Inch and we do like a meme coin DEX. We do it on Ethereum and Pulse Chain, but we're also looking probably in the future go base, possibly even other chains where there is like big meme coin communities. So number one meme coin DEX. And, you know, that's that's something that we're considering. We're looking at other la like layer twos or layer ones and where to go as well. So that's the kind of future plans for us. Maybe we can talk after. Yeah, what, what I've heard from, uh, I mean, I can say my own experiences, but even other people who are uh, tweeting about Shibarium or tweeting about SHIB or, or doing any sort of marketing that relates to SHIB, anytime they're building there or anytime they're talking about SHIB, it's like 100x the, the amount of social impressions and social engagements that they get in terms of the, the community size compared to other places. So the, the amount of retail activity within this ecosystem is, is crazy and the support. Um, so I would definitely encourage looking into it and, and looking into launching there as well yeah we got some shit in my wallet love it cheers man taco you got that hand up and then i've got a big question we're going to roll into a bit of an ama uh, session with them uh so <clears throat> i know one of the things the hardest things and i'm not talking down about pulse chain but one of the hardest things is, for pulse chain is recognition um and acceptance by the broader blockchain communities i guess you could say and like the bigger tech infrastructure pieces so buzz uh or canine uh what is shibarium doing for like partnerships with like layer zero wormhole chain link uh and, and bigger players like that for recognition buzz or i, 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 cut, out, I cut out there could you repeat the last part uh uh, what what is what is Shib uh, Shibarium doing for like recognition or partnerships with like the bigger players for uh, acceptance by the broader community with like partnerships with like Layer Zero or Wormhole or Chainlink? That's a good question. Like like one that I wouldn't really necessarily be able to answer in terms of what they're doing. Um, like I know right now is a lot of upgrades to the chain. And uh, like I know that there's uh, the, the, Shib the Shiba Swap Dex is launching there soon, um, but really couldn't speak towards their their partnership pipeline. Um, but uh, I, I can assume that due to the popularity of Wormhole and Layer Zero, that it's definitely on their eyes. That's a really good question because it's the kind of question you would ask to not just figure out what's going on down chain, but up chain too. What kind of partnerships is Shibarium making? Now, having said that, uh, we know one of the partnerships that Canine Finance has is with Shiba Inu. They are one of the official partnerships with SHIB. So while we are here today to talk about liquid staking in general, uh, we're going to talk about some very specific stake. Uh, in fact, the stake that is offered at Canine Finance. So we heard about what they're doing, and he's talked a little bit about that, but it's also that Canine Finance is a DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organization. So what is Canine Finance DAO uh, from a top-down perspective? It's not just liquid staking. What are you guys doing as a whole? Yeah, so it's a, uh, I mean, the, the panel seems to be quite knowledgeable 
about liquid staking products. So uh, Shibarium is a, a, a layer two, and uh, and we are the the Lido for Shibarium. So um, we're modeled and, and kind of using the architecture behind how uh, Lido Polygon works. But the the stark difference with with K9 Finance is that when you're using Lido Polygon, um, you're you're, you're delegating Matic. You're, you're actually receiving that stake Matic on the ETH chain. Whereas the stark difference with us is that we recognize like, hey, Shibarium needs more TVL. There's great builders here. There's great tokens here. There's great NFTs here. But the, the bridging options in TVL are lacking. So immediately when you're delegating to a validator within our system, you're, you're getting that LSD token directly on the L2. Um, so using the product drives TVL Right to the L2, and we've gotten great adoption in terms of community size uh, for when our product goes live in Q3 of people being really excited for this because people who are very pro SHIB and are pro Shibarium and they believe in the future of that, they, they've really embraced K9 to be a piece of technology that could assist in making the TVL go 5, 10, 20x over a, a good period of time. And with the DAO, I see Turtle is down there, too. I want to swing your spotlight off because you guys have been listening to Buzz. Turtle's here this time, and Turtle is part of the team that's building the forum and working hard on the DAO side of this. Turtle, can you talk about what modeling that DAO, uh, he said similar to Lido, what have you been working on for the DAO side? Yeah, sure. So we looked, uh, I mean, we've all participated, the team at least, in a variety of DAOs across the space. And, you know, we aligned most closely with the Lido model. Uh, we made a few adjustments, but essentially for us having full transparency and getting a DAO in place was really the first priority. I mean, really even before major budgets were approved and everything else. So very quickly, we set up a, a discussion forum where users have been very active. It's at forum.k9finance.com. And everyone's been submitting proposals, leaving feedback. It's uh, really been impressive to see the engagement from the community kind of like echoing what Buzz was saying about the SHIB army. And actually our next uh, vote on those proposals, so the, the workflow is proposals enter the discussion forum. They live there for at least five days. And then after they've gathered enough feedback, we have a round table call with kind of like the advisory committee to review the proposals, make sure they align with the mission. And our next call is going to be on this Friday. So everyone should keep eyes out for the next round of proposals. And the two of you together between uh, your participation, like you said, and other DAOs and stuff like this, have, has your, uh, the community's reception and activity in the forum and the snapshots, what do you, what do you think about how that's been going? What's your uh, reaction to that? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's relatively new to the, to the ship community to be operating in a DAO. And, and like, like Turtle said, we're using pretty much the same infrastructure stack that, that Lido is, like same structure. Like go to a forum, get a community uh, consensus around a certain topic, then go to Snapchat, Snapshot and do an on-chain vote. Um, but it, it's relatively new to the, like this retail audience of what we're working with with the ship community. And uh, what we're trying to do with our DAO is really to have proposals be less tactical and more high level, like, like giving people within the community and developers within the community, marketers within the community autonomy to, to work within the DAO framework. So that, that's a transition that we're trying to go through right now, where a lot of the proposals have been like tactic level, like day-to-day -day operational level, and we're trying to bring them upstream to be more like, hey, what are we trying to do big picture over the next three, six, nine months, and, and how do we empower the right people to accomplish those things rather than be super tactical about it. And then Turtle, what do you think about getting people transitioned? Because I know some people were obviously here on X, and then crypto lives a little bit more on Telegram, I think. What's it been like getting people to adopt back into a forum and stuff and try and have uh, longer, more thoughtful discussions? How's that going? Yeah, you know, I was a little concerned uh, just with the type of community that SHIB is and not having a lot of experience with DAOs or maybe forums. You know, I'm a little bit older and have been online since, you know, I was five. So I've been very active in those types of communities. And really, the, the engagement has been much uh, higher than I expected. I mean, some of our proposals are getting 40, 50 replies within a few days of, of being live. People are contributing ideas and good feedback. And really, within weeks of, of the 
token going live, we, we've become fully operational as a DAO. I mean, there's nothing that's happening without going through that process. And I, I think that people should be aware that being active on Snapshot in the forum and et cetera uh, has value. I'll let Buzz kind of tease more to that. But yeah, overall, just really happy to see the engagement there. And we're going now, you guys are in your second quarter now since your launch. We talked uh, once a little bit closer back before that on another Mario Spaces. Since we are in quarter two, you've been teasing some cool videos uh, on your timelines and stuff. What's what's brewing over there? What's the buzz, if I may? Yeah, I mean, identifying to build on, on Shibarium, like, like one thing that we saw is like, hey, it's a new chain. The, there's, there's growing pains with, with any new chain. So... Um, a lot of people see us in the community as kind of like an external development arm, like a, an official SHIB partner, and like one of my titles is that I'm a development advocate for Shibarium as well. So when speaking with the SHIB team, it was like, hey, like this is one of the largest products that's going to be launched on Shibarium, and we wanted to help with a lot of documentation gaps. Um, so like people within the SHIB community, like you've probably seen um, new validator documentation on how to get set up as a validator on Shibarium. So we've been going back and forth with the SHIB team, making that so that it's seamless for other people to, to go through that. And Q2 for us has been all about launching on Testnet. And uh, today, actually, we put out some announcement that we've been whitelisted on, uh, on PuppyNet, which is the Testnet of Shibarium as a validator. So we're now able to test the majority of our product on there, um, which was a big gap. Like, like nobody has ever, as far as I know, done something like this on scale on, on puppy net yet and uh r really trying to pave the way here as as being that lido for shibarium to have robust documentation for the next builders to come after us and a win for us is really creating this environment and this DAO structure um where we have robust documentation robust development materials where we can bring a new wave of builders in that are going to build on top of canine so like we were talking about before um on ethereum once you get into Lido, there's so many things that you can do on top of that. Like you can you can use it in Curve, you can do it in Aave. Um, there, there's so many places to, to use an LSD product on Ethereum. And we're really providing the, the infrastructure layer where it's like, hey, you can now do an LSD product on Shibarium and really want to bring more builders in. Where now when you have that LSD, there's tens of things that you can do with that token to gain more yield just outside of K9 as well. So I got a question I'm going to bounce to all three of you maybe, and I bet Funk will have an opinion on this for sure. Um, but the, the way things are going over on uh, Shibarium, I've seen some FUD because, and I want, to, I want to do a public FUD busting opportunity. I think this is cool to do this. I saw people say, if you guys are so big on Shibarium, why are you on ETH? And I know I can feel Funk's blood boiling. I want to hear from Buzz first. I saw somebody say this. Why is your token on ETH? Because the K9 token as it exists right now, which is already out and available and stuff like that, is on Ethereum. And they were saying, well, you are on ETH, so you're not supporting Shibarium. What do you say to that? Uh, it's a simple architecture problem. It's like the validators for Shibarium are on Ethereum. So when... when the, the, another big difference between us and, and Lido Polygon is that like where value accrual comes in. Um, so we recognize like with our audience, like they like to own tokens. Like we don't necessarily know. Well, we do know that it's going to be a new operation for them to be using an LSD product. So we wanted value accrual to happen at the token level as well. Like when you're using Lido, you stake your ETH, you get Steeth. It's a reflect token. So you're earning by actually using the LSD. And with the Lido token specifically, the, the case study to own that is like, hey, I want to be part of the governance process. And that's the main value add there. Um, the difference here with K9 is that a lot of the fees that are being generated through the DAO and through the validator are going to accrue to the token. And because of the architecture, I know this is a long-winded answer, but the validators are stood up on Ethereum. When we're providing value accrual to the token, that we're going to get the value accrual on Ethereum. So we need that uh, that yield to be given on Ethereum through the product and and need uh, an element on both chains. Awesome. Funk, I know you're over there. What do you think when someone says something like that? What do you think the, the thought goes through your mind? Yeah, I'll try to keep it pretty short. But in general, uh, a large amount of the money is on Ethereum. I do think, you know, in addition to us bridging and needing to stay on Ethereum for the tech itself, uh, for the validator, because that's where people are going to be delegating their bone and staking their canine. Um, 
<clears throat> I think a lot of the value and the reason that Shiba Inu official team has launched a lot of their products on ETH is because you kind of need to herd people over. You need to help reach those large audiences and then kind of show them the way to the new blockchain. A lot of the infrastructure is very, <clears throat> apologies, uh, just kind of starting out with Shibarium. So a lot of the things are still being built. ShibaSwap 1.75 is right around the corner. I know that's going to provide a lot of liquidity and value to trading uh, to and from Shibarium. So between that, the total value locked, a lot of people are just kind of waiting and building behind the scenes uh, to kind of build the infrastructure, the furniture, if you will, for it to be a great place to trade and live on. And I think uh, Canine Finance uh, and, and the Bone Crusher utility is going to do that as good as anything else in the space by increasing the total value locked and the total market share that's over there to get people... Uh, you know, seeing dollar signs in their eyes and seeing that there's value over there to go trade. Um, but canine finance itself is going to bridge to Shibarium as well. I don't know if that was mentioned, but uh, important to know that we will be on both chains as this thing grows. Good points there. And then Turtle, I see uh, your hand up, Pulse. I'm going to go to you afterwards. But Turtle, what do you think when someone says, uh, why aren't you on ETH? Is it just they're not reading the documentation? They don't understand the structure at all? Yeah, I mean, I think fundamentally people just don't quite understand that there's a product being developed that product lives on shibarium in order for canine to live on shibarium the product needs to be finished i think it's partly that simple and as far as product development goes we're on track and you know we're expecting q3 so i hope that it, i think i think it really boils down to like a simple question for some some people Cool. Pulse, I'm going to go to you uh, with your hand up, and then we're going to start making some, uh, if I got a couple of final wrap-up questions for K9, and then we're going to check in with the speakers and everything before we head out. But go ahead. Yeah, basically, as a founder, you're taking such a big risk on choosing which L1 or L2 to launch on. And I was wondering what Buzz and K9 and these other guys, what criteria they look at when they choose an L1 or L2 to launch on. Um, so that was my question. Buzz or uh, Turtle, either one? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a lot of the things that traders, DGENs alike are, are looking for. It's uh, it's TVL, other products to work with. Um, but in our case, like I said earlier in the space, it, it was really about seeing at East Toronto last year how rabid the SHIB army was, seeing an opportunity of Shibarium launching. It's a chain that is supporting 2 million plus holders for SHIB, um, one of the best branded tokens out there in terms of like if you're taking an Uber drive anywhere in the world, there's probably a good chance that that Uber driver knows five tokens maybe, and SHIB is probably one of them. Um, so being and, and knowing that when we we're going to build here, we we're going to have that official SHIB partnership title to be the official staking for SHIB. Uh, we knew that there'd be a lot of co-branding recognition that comes along with that. And there was an incredible opportunity um, where we felt this chain was going to be undervalued and that we could serve as an infrastructural layer to capture a lot of that value for our community. Um, so we just identified as Shibarium as being a very nascent chain with a lot of room to grow and the opportunity to play a, pretty, a really pivotal role in that growth. That's a killer answer. Social metrics can determine so much of that. David, you got any questions? I got maybe one more for them before we wrap this thing up. Anything spring to mind for you? Yeah, actually one. Like, I mean, it's something that I asked before. I'm, I'm super bullish on partnerships and all sorts of integrations. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm curious what these guys see for the next one. Like, when, when something big happens in Web3 and we hear about it, that's only the first. Like, I already know that they're planning something for the second and third and probably all the way down to the 69th. I'm, I'm curious what these guys are looking for. And, you know, like partnerships and integration wise, like I'm, I'm already bullish. Like, guys, make, make me a little more bullish and just blow this meter through the top. What do you think, Buzz? You got some partnerships cooking? You got some, somebody working down the line that's going to make David go absolutely out of his mind? <laughs> well, I feel like some of the partnerships that uh, that we're looking to share um, in, in terms of like this extreme alpha is, is like more on the, the SHIB team side. Like we're not necessarily privy to exactly what their um, partnership pipeline looks like. Um, like we're building with them on a day-to-day -day basis, but not, not necessarily privy to the, the wormhole partnerships and things of that ilk. Um, but uh, interested to, to hear if anyone else has some alpha to share. 
I see two hands. We're running up on the, the timer here, boys. So I see Taco and Pulse one more time, and then I got a final wrap up question. Uh, Buzz, if you want to, uh, uh, if you want to reach out to me, DM. Let's connect on Telegram. I can connect you with the uh, BD team over at Wormhole if that's something you want to work on. Happy to help new infrastructure and, and projects building. Uh, I'm. I love your chain. Not the great thing about different chains is your chain might not be for everyone, but it might be for someone. Uh, so keep fucking building. Don't be a dick. Rule number one in crypto. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, there's some, you know, look at, you know, look at some of the polygon movers and builders. You know, I would like, you know, everyone looks for financial instruments. Like, uh, talk to the, the Keom uh, people, uh, team, they used to be known as Ovix. You know, they do a lot of that borrow lending stuff. Um, so they can bring that, they, if they can fork as a polygon, uh, fork uh, into onto pup and then onto shib. Uh, that might be a really cool partnership there. Um, one of the things that I wanted to ask, you know, uh, what version of Lido did you guys fork? Because um, one of my big things on Lido right now is their V four fork uh, upgrade that they did. And so one of my my major projects is Morpheus, where they have almost five hundred million dollars worth of stake ETH in their protocol right now, and it's the, they're using the people can pull out their ETH anytime, but the the emissions instead of that the person getting the three percent, the protocol is getting three that three percent to provide that liquidity to their token. Uh, are you doing anything like that? Um, because that then becomes a community growth where I can pull out my money and I'm not sacrificing something. I'm not you know putting in something and losing it. I can pull my my staked ETH out anytime. Yeah, so we, uh, we we forked Lido Polygon, um, so it, it doesn't necessarily have the upgrades from the V4 that you're you're speaking about, but we, we've made a lot of customizations, and a lot of the customizations are around what you're talking about. Like like we have like what's called a a, a buffer where we have instantaneous like w withdraws, um, so that people have like we have a a reserve in there where people can go in and out immediately, not actually impacting the the TVL within the product. So like a lot of the things that you're talking about that would be happening in V4, like we've custom built within this fork of Lido Polygon. So trying to achieve a lot of the same um, benefits that you're speaking about, but Lido Polygon fork doesn't have those upgrades right now. As far as I, appreciate everybody, I appreciate everybody else having their hands up, but I got one more question I got to ask before we got to fly. Time's short and life is fleeting. Sorry, but uh, there's one word, two words. I'm going to use two words, Buzz, uh, at the end of this space. Is that if anybody's still there, their ears are going to perk up. What is a retroactive airdrop, and why do you have 7% of your tokens set aside for that? Yeah, yeah. So we, we do have a retroactive airdrop. Um, basically, what that means is that people who are doing actions that are going to support the uh, canine product, but also the Shibarium chain are going to receive uh, an airdrop in Q4. Um, so a lot of these actions that we're, we're monitoring in terms of the provenance of a wallet are going to be, hey, have you bridged to Shibarium? Have you purchased canine? Have you staked canine? Have you used the canine product? And from what we've seen for products like Cheeto or, or many other products, there's tons of case studies out there of how this has worked for not only L2s, but dApps as well as uh, retroactive airdrops drive users and it's giving away tokens and giving away DAO ownership to people not just for liking and commenting on tweets and things like that but real users people who are going to support the adoption of Shibarium the adoption of K9 and uh, and really benefiting actions like testing the product voting in the DAO being part of the community using Shibarium that, that are going to help us in Shibarium for the long term yep and I hope everybody was listening to that. And if you have any other questions about what a retroactive airdrop looks like, you guys are already following Mario, because that's how you got to the spaces, and you're following me and David. But now you got to follow the K9 Finance account, because words like that are juicy. Retroactive airdrop, things like on the forum and with their dApps and stuff like that, that's news uh, worth following. So make sure you're listening to them for future updates. Normally, if we had time, I would run through uh, final thoughts and stuff with the speakers, but frankly, it got too juicy, and we ran over, and I have got the, the bells ringing behind me. You guys know how studio production works david we have to get the hell out of the studio the next guy's coming in man what are you gonna do sorry i know oh, oh man honestly pulse like why, why can't why can't we keep this going for another 69 hours and just set like an entire new world record like dj and book of world records will be in the first five pages but i'm down I, um, I, I just want to know the, the buzz's dog's name and i'm good to go <laughs> 
He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna put that shit on pump on fun. Don't give it to him, Buzz. He's gonna go oh, he's gonna go tokenize your dog and steal it. Tokenizing dogs is super hot right now. Don't do it, Buzz. Fitty, I'm on to you, bro. I'm watching. <laughs> I know this guy. That's D Gen shit. <laughs> That cracks me yeah, up. I'm, I'm definitely with that. I uh, lo love the energy. I'm all for tokenizing pets and putting them on chain for everybody to play around with. But honestly, Pulse, like I'm, I'm gonna look more into these guys. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna check out much more about what they're doing. And Buzz, you should, you should have just led with that. When I asked about partnerships, you should have, you should have just told me, hey, um, seven percent going over here. Like that's what I, that's what I want to know. That's huge, juicy news. Best thing to do would be join the Telegram uh, for K9 Finance. If you're lucky, maybe afterwards they throw open a VC or something in there, uh, and you can continue the conversation in there. Because we do have to cut it short here. We went five minutes over our allotment. The parking meter outside, they're out there writing a ticket on my car uh, right now in digital spaces. Elon's going to give Mario a ticket. I can't keep paying tickets for Mario, you guys. Uh, so before we go, I want to say thank you to David and give David a second to tell everybody else thank you. David, thank you for being my co-host, dude. I love having you up here. I appreciate that pulse and you know that thanks to you too bro i i don't know what it is like i think we're just this one two duo instead of batman and robin we're like batman and superman up here love it justice league of spaces i'm gonna run with that i'll have a graphic made in the meantime i want to say thank you to all of our guests that came up here all of the people that came to our panel we always have the best guests in spaces so make sure you're following everybody that came up as a speaker if they're in a spaces you should probably be there too i want to say thank you to canine finance for being here for another spaces about liquid staking and the things they're working on for shibarium and the greater shib economy make sure you're following buzz the canine finance account which is funk behind their funk you did a great job we appreciate you and also turtle down there managing their forums and their data Thank you guys for stopping by and giving us the update. We look forward to hearing from you again in Q3, maybe, as these things are rolling out, because I know when the apps and the dApps are ready, uh, everybody's going to want to hear about it again. And in the meantime, for Mario and for myself and for David, thank you guys for letting us be your Spaces host today, for choosing to be here for our Spaces. It's the number one Spaces on X. Anytime you turn on the platform, it's going to be Mario and the boys up here. So look for me and David again next time on a Mario Nawfall X Spaces. Have a great afternoon, everybody. We'll see you next time.